Well, let's uh, look at some video now. And Bruce, if you could uh, tell us some of what we're seeing here is what we did to get ready to fly tonight. So. Okay, this is the Delta II first stage. Um, it's manufactured in Decatur and shipped to Building 836 at uh, Vandenberg Air Force Base. And right now they're going to lift it off the transport uh, truck and then um, they'll back in this uh, transport erector um, and they'll go ahead and move it over to the horizontal processing facility. And over there they'll do receive an inspection and they'll install some uh, ordnance and um, do some additional preparation before they move it to the launch pad. So we're back at 836 again, and uh, this, this looks to be the second stage of the Delta II launch vehicle. And uh, they'll go ahead and uh, take this out of the vehicle and again, put it on a, one of those uh, yellow transporters and prepare it for its move out to the launch pad. This is also a manufactured indicator. And this looks like we're already on to the payload fairing. Uh, this is one half, and the uh, metal structure you see there around the fairing is what we call a strong back. It's just a handling fixture. And uh, this is the uh, first of the fairing halves going up the side of the launch tower. You can see that the fairings are in a protective bagging. So we actually uh, leave the clean facility with three bags on the payload fairing. Uh, this is an item we have to keep extremely clean. And then just before we hoist it up the tower, we remove one of those bags. And then here you can see it coming into the white room. And um, once this white room is uh, clean and stabilized, uh, they'll remove one more bag and it'll stay over here stowed until it's time to install the payload fairing around the spacecraft. So this here is the uh, first stage. This time it's headed out to the launch pad. And um, see what you see here is the top of the first stage fuel tank. Um, this stage uses RP-1 and liquid oxygen. So you have an RP-1 tank on top and the liquid oxygen tank on the bottom. And there's a good shot of the Pratt & Whitney Rocket 9 RS-27A engine. So this will be hoisted up into the mobile service tower. And um, this, uh, this stage is about eight feet in diameter. And now what we see here is the first stage being lowered down onto the uh, launch mount. And this is the inner stage here. Um, the inner stage is really just a hollow cylinder and uh, this will be hoisted up on top of the first stage and uh, the open cylinder allows room for the uh, second stage engine nozzle to fit inside of it. So now we have uh, one of the solid motors. Uh, these are manufactured by Alliant Tech Systems and uh, the NPP rocket uses nine of these strap-on solids and each solid adds an additional 110,000 pounds of thrust to our NPP Delta II launch vehicle. So these solids are 40 inch solids. These are the standard graphite epoxy motors uh, as opposed to the larger Delta II heavy solids. And uh, they're about 40 feet tall and they'll go ahead and mate them over a period of three to four days all nine solids. So this is the Delta II second stage out at the launch pad now. What you see there is the top of the guidance section. It houses the uh, the uh, launch vehicle avionics and it's a good shot there of the uh, Aerojet AJ-10 engine. Um, this engine is a hypergolic engine uses uh, Aerozine 50 and nitrogen tetroxide and here you see it being lowered down into the inner stage. And this is our spacecraft being transported to the pad. Uh, this was uh, on the morning of October 13th. And we had been fighting some wind issues this week, so we transported very early that morning, but we had to wait 
uh, down at the bottom of the tower in order for the winds to subside to an acceptable level. So what you see now is the uh, spacecraft inside the uh, transport canister being lowered down onto the uh, Delta II second stage. And here's a beautiful shot of the MPP spacecraft. And what we're doing now is we're going to move this protective fairing and encapsulate the spacecraft. And uh, this fairing will remain on and we're in this configuration now until about five minutes into the launch when it's jettisoned. And I think that's pretty much it. Bruce, what would be, do uh, you think, will be the highlight for you in the uh, launch tonight? What will you be watching for that uh, I think will probably be what you'd say is, is uh, the crescendo for you and all of the activity to get ready to fly tonight? Um, well, there's so much that goes into it from all the different teams. Uh, you know, Spacecraft has been working to prepare these instruments in the spacecraft for so long. And uh, you, the United Launch Alliance folks have worked so hard to get this rocket ready. ready. And uh, the Launch Services program has pulled the two together here. And, uh, you know, we're one team, and I don't think anybody's going to be happy until we see that spacecraft safely on orbit and operating. And we should know the health of that spacecraft about 90 minutes after launch. Bruce, thank you very much. And uh, best of luck, of course. Bruce Reed, the mission manager for NPP for our NASA's Launch Services Program at Kennedy. At T minus 111 minutes, 8 seconds and counting, this is Delta Launch Control. <laughs>